Hi, it's Adam with WebStarts.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create an online store for selling your art and collectibles. I created this store and I gave it the name of Artworks. Here I've chosen to display some of my art using the gallery app on my homepage. I've also added a form to build a newsletter or email list and I've included a blog, about page, contact page, and a store. That's where people can actually go to my website and make a purchase of some of my artwork. So you can see that I've created a checkout page and a catalog and I have all my prices and all the information and everything I need to begin collecting payments and selling products online. Let me show you how I did that in Web Starts. The first thing you'll need to do is go to webstarts.com and click on get started it's free. Then you'll want to search for just the right template that you're going to start building your store out of and if you're looking to do a store I suggest clicking on the online store templates. I found this store it's made for handmade soaps but I thought it might work good for my photo gallery so I went ahead and selected it. In the next step, you're prompted to enter your name, email address, and choose a password for your account. So go ahead and put in your full name along with your email address. And then lastly, choose a password for the account. When you click sign up, you'll be asked to enter your phone number and then just verify with the code that you receive. Now I've already signed up, so I'm going to skip forward to show you what it's like once you log into your account. The first page you see when you log into your Web Starts account is called the dashboard. On the dashboard will be a thumbnail of your website, and if you scroll down, you'll see various apps that connect to your website. For this demo, I'm going to be connecting the store and the blog app. You connect an app just by clicking on it, and if that app requires you to subscribe to a plan to activate it, you just want to subscribe to a plan. You can create an online store and web starts, however, without subscribing to a plan, there are only very few limitations. Here you can see that I've created all of my products and I've given them names. Let me show you how I did that. To create a new product, click Add Product, and then just give your product a name. Next, give your product a description in the field below and then add an image for, or multiple images for your product. Keep scrolling down. You can see you have the option to add videos. You can enter a price right here. Decide whether or not you'd like to collect tax on this particular item. And you can even assign your products to categories. So if you want to create a new category name, you would just select that option there. I did enable shipping on my items and I entered in just a product weight. You can choose to enter both the weight and the product dimensions if that applies to what you're doing. You can also choose to hide a product from a store catalog. This is a good option if you want people to find a product at a certain price from let's say for example an email blast or a special sale but you don't want it to appear in the regular catalog you would want to enable that. Enabling variants is perfect if you're selling something like clothing and you need to sell it in various sizes, colors, and materials. Inventory management is completely optional. When dealing with artwork, however, it's unlikely that you're going to have a lot of a particular design, so it's probably not going to apply for you. And neither is digital delivery because that mainly has to do with delivering software files and other digital file types. I've already created my product, so clicking back on the product link, you can kind of see what I've done here. And if you want to see what it looks like on the page, you can just click the view option and you'll see what the store looks like. People can add it to the cart and they can check out. Some of the other things that you'll want to keep track of in your store are the settings. I gave my store the store name of Artworks, so that appears on the top of my receipts, on the header of my checkout, tracking information, and other places. It didn't include a phone number, but by entering a phone number, that will appear in various places as well. You can choose whether or not to use a store logo. Store logos, once again, appear on your checkout page, 
and in your email receipts and tracking receipts. When you sign up for a Web Starts account, you're automatically configured to use WePay. You'll get an email sent to your email address where you'll be able to confirm your WePay account and then enter in the banking details where you would like your payments to be deposited. If you'd like to accept PayPal, make sure that you check the PayPal option and enter your PayPal email address. You can also choose to allow your customers to enter comments on the checkout page. So if you're selling an item that needs special instructions, you could make sure that that box is checked. By checking the allow customer login at checkout, you'll allow your customers to be able to create a username and password, come back to your website and make further purchases without having to re-enter all their billing and shipping information. They'll also have the ability to log into your website and check the status of their order. Under the tax settings, you can enter in both state and country taxes. You can enter various taxes for various municipalities, however they apply to you and whatever rates apply. Under shipping, there are a variety of options. You can ship by UPS, by weight, by price, quantity, a flat rate, or you can offer free shipping. If you ship by weight, you can give it a weight range and then assign a price for that weight range. And then you can assign an additional price for another weight range and then you can continue to add those. And you can do the same thing if you're shipping by price. So for example, if you had items if you spent zero to $99, you might want to charge $20 in shipping. If you spent more than $99, you might want to charge free shipping, something like that. So whenever you set up your shipping options, be sure to click the update button. Something else you'll find under the settings is the ability to toggle between test mode and live mode. Currently I'm in live mode, so whatever transactions I run will actually process on a credit card. But if you do switch to test mode, you can just enter any random credit card number and the transaction will process, but this will give you the opportunity to experience what your store customer is going to experience on the front end. If you do put your account into test mode, be sure to toggle it back to live mode prior to accepting live transactions, otherwise you won't receive payment. Once you receive orders, you'll get an email notification and it will take you to the orders tab. There you'll find all the various information you need to ship your products out. And you'll also see options where you can enter tracking information and then send your customers updated order status, like for example, the tracking number, so they can figure out where their package is in transit. You can run reports, you can create coupons. There are a whole lot of features for the store. And if you want to learn more about those features, then I encourage you to subscribe to our channel and watch more of the videos that I've created about how to create an online store. Let me show you how you can edit the pages of your store. Go ahead and hover over the thumbnail to your site in the dashboard view and click Edit Site. This opens up the Web Starts Page Editor. In the Web Starts Page Editor, you can edit any of the elements on the page just by double clicking on them. Like for example, if you want to edit the contents of a text box, you just double click on it and then type into that text box. You can also adjust things like your font styles and some of the properties to that font as well. Just about everything in Web Starts is customizable and it can all be dragged and dropped where you'd like it to appear. You can use either the mouse to move elements around or you can use the keyboard arrow keys if you'd like to help keep things moving in a straight line. Now this is the gallery app that I've added here. So by double clicking on it, you'll open up a management panel where you can add or remove the various artwork from the gallery. If you do decide to add some images to the gallery, you can upload those from your local computer like I have, or you can find those using the image search feature. This gives you access to stock images, or you can connect your Facebook account and grab images from there. You can update your gallery just by clicking on update. I'll save that for later.
One thing to keep in mind when you're making edits and changes to the pages of your website with Web Starts is that the page editor is divided into three sections. This top section that when you click on it is highlighted in green is called the header and everything you place into the header will appear on the top of each page. So for example, the name of my business, the menu, the social bar, and this checkout widget will all appear in the same place at the top of each page of my website, wherever this header is displayed. You can choose to enable or disable the header just by clicking view and then unchecking next to show header, and then it won't be displayed, but you'll probably want to display that for the most part. Similar to the way that the header works is the footer. Again, if you select the footer, you'll notice a green outline is shown and anything that you place into the footer will also be displayed on each page of your website in the same location. Now, if you do decide to place an element into the footer, it works a little bit different than the header. What you do is you drag an element right up against this dotted line for the footer and then you click the add to footer button. That places the element into the footer and then you can position it where you'd like it to appear. You can modify your store page appearance by selecting the store page from the drop down menu in the top left. From there you can click on the store element and then click on the settings cog and you can do things like adjust the number of columns the number of rows. You can choose to scale your images between crop and fit, and you can display your images with different aspect ratios. You can also choose to show your categories, show your product search feature, and show your sorting options. Here you see the sorting options, over here is the search, and then here are the categories. I haven't created any categories for this store, but you can still see them nonetheless. If you'd like to edit your product page, you would just navigate over to your product page. And here, once again, by selecting the element, you'll have the option to show categories, product search, sorting options, and that's about it. You can change other things in your Web Starts account just by clicking on the design tab. For example, you can change all of your textiles. These textiles are applied to uh, various elements on the page but you can also change them by just selecting them, choosing your font styles and sizes and colors from the toolbar at the top of the editor. One of the nice things about Web Starts when compared to other online store builders is your ability to easily create things like your home page, about page, contact page, and any landing pages where you might send people from an advertisement or an email blast but also it's easy to create content using the blog app. So if we go out to the dashboard and you scroll down, you can click on the blog app and you can create a new post just by clicking new post, give that post a title, enter an author name, and then you can just begin typing your story. Notice when you drop your cursor into the body of the blog post, there are two little icons. Those are the icons that will let you select an image or video file to insert into the blog post itself. You can schedule a blog post by clicking on the date and time that you want that blog post to be published, or you can just choose to publish it right away or save it as a draft for later. When you're ready, just go ahead and exit out. You can see that when you've activated the blog app, in your Web Starts account, you're going to have the word blog on your menu, and then when people click on the blog, they'll be able to read the blog posts that you've published. This is great because when you create fresh content like this all the time, Google is more likely to crawl your website, and then you get better search engine ranking, and ultimately you get found. And content is just an important part of marketing your business online. Another thing that you can do with Web Starts that you can't do on a lot of the other online store builders is add customized forms. Here on my home page, I've added a form that asks for a name and email address in order to get a 10% discount on the first order. It's a good way to attract new customers. And when they submit their name and email address, that data is then put into a contacts app on the back end 
You can find that by logging into your account and then clicking on contacts. And it's also synchronized with the email marketing application. So if you wanted to subscribe to the email marketing application, you're going to find you've already created a list with all of the emails that you've collected from the forms on your website. And you're going to be able to send both regular pre-scheduled auto responses to that list. So those are follow-ups that go out at designated times after the person has subscribed to your list. And you're also going to be able to send out broadcast emails to your entire list. So if you have a sale and you want to promote something, you would just send out an email blast to all of the subscribers of your email list. And it's a great way to generate business to your website. To create or customize one of these forms, just go back into the Web Starts page editor. And then you can just find the form down here at the bottom of the page. And to customize it, you can just double click on it essentially. And then you can choose the various fields that you want to collect data for. For example, maybe you'd like to collect a phone number. And you can also do field settings, so you can change the labels on each of the fields, and you can choose to put the label into the field itself and some other customization options. If you click on the form settings tab, you can control the email address where you'll receive a notification when somebody completes a form. You can also add additional email addresses that will be notified when somebody completes a form. You can choose where to send people after they've submitted their form, and you can even choose to put them into one of those email lists like I mentioned earlier. You can view form submissions as well just by clicking on the date range right here. When you're ready to update that form, you just click Update Form, and then it's updated on your page. If you want to add a new form to a page, just click Add, and then just click Contact Form. Your store will look great not only on your desktop device, but also on your mobile device. You do need to upgrade to a paid subscription in order to gain access to the mobile editor, but it is available and your store will look good on a mobile device. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to visit webstarts.com to create your very own free online store, whether you're selling art or collectibles or anything else. All of Webstarts templates are 100 percent customizable and any of them can have a store and a blog added to the website itself. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications to be the first to find out when I release a new video. And always remember, go to webstarts.com to see more helpful videos like this. Thanks for watching.